So a few weeks ago, my buddy Adam Vibe Gutten messaged me and he was like, hey, you should come with us out to Fort Lauderdale to film some YouTube content. And I was like, I mean, that's what I do. So we went out to Fort Lauderdale and we're filming some videos and um, all of the content is supposed to be wholesome. Adam, he specializes in drug addiction uh, recovery, so he helps people that are um, having active drug addiction issues um, find Jesus and get over that addiction. So we're out filming a video, and the idea is we're holding a sign that says, I lost everything to drug addiction, I just need someone to talk to. And we're filming, 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 and finally we start getting some re good reactions, and then we're like, okay, we need to go relocate and start on a new idea. And so we're driving to this part of town that was like really rough, I mean super rough. An area that was like everybody that you saw walking was probably on drugs, was probably like completely lost in general. So. Um, we're driving and we see this lady. She appears to be praying for this, these two people at this bus stop. So we're like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. So Adam and I whipped the car around and he was like, we're gonna give them a couple Bibles and pray for them. And just thank them for you know praying for some random strangers on the, at the bus stop. So we whip, whip around real quick and we pull up right in front of them. We're right in front of this little, little bus stop. And we realized very quickly that the lady actually wasn't praying for them. What was happening is she was super, she was just gone. She was so high on drugs and alcohol that she was just, it was so sad. I don't even know how to explain how sad I was. And so Adam was like, well, maybe we should like get out and pray for her. And so it, basically, oh, well, number one, she was super high on drugs. Number two, we think she may have been prostituting. Well, we basically knew she was prostituting. And the guy that she was all over was like, it was just bad. It was so bad. Uh, and the thing is, she was a pretty girl. Like she had potential. And I think she knows she has potential. So Ab and I just sat in the car and we were just like pondering on like what we should do. And we're both basically in tears because this is like the saddest thing I've ever witnessed in my entire life. And I've seen some really sad stuff. So we're sitting in the car and she starts to look at us. And she's, I mean, the look that she gave us when she looked at us, she just looked like, like just so out of it. So she walks to Adam's side, Adam was driving. And I was like, well, I feel like I should document this. So I pulled out the camera and I'm filming her. She comes to the window and she asks us for money. And it was just so sad, man, like, I've never wanted to like just bust out tears ever that bad. And so we're talking to her and we're asking her if she needs anything. And I tell Adam like, maybe we can take her to a restaurant and just let her like, help her like sober up and talk to her. And so he asked her, he's like, hey, do you want to go get some food with us? And she's like, no, I, no, you got a dollar and she just kept on and on and that like we're not really making any sense. All I want to do is make a dollar. One dollar. I need some dope, I need a roll up. And we asked her, like, do you need anything? Can we help you? Can we take you somewhere? And she wasn't really saying anything. And we had mentioned, like, would you like to go to a rehab? And she it was like she automatically snapped out of it. She, have you ever thought about treatment? Oh, no. No? I'll be your friend though, but no. And um, I thought that was kind of bizarre. 
And after talking to her for a little bit longer, I, we realized she kept messing around with her leg and we looked down and lo and behold, she has an ankle bracelet on. I got a bracelet. You do? I just got them less than a day ago. And they told her, she kept telling us that she needed to stay between Broward County and another county. And I was just thinking like, what does a homeless person do when they get released from jail and they're on house arrest? I guess they literally just tell them, hey, you got to stay between this county and this county. And if you leave that county, then we're going to come find you and take you back to jail. Like, what a great solution. So <clears throat> we're talking to her and we're not getting anywhere. And then all these guys keep coming up to her and talking to her in the process. And I think God has a bigger plan for you. I think God has an amazing plan for you and he says that he loves you. You're his daughter. Nico, and roll it. I, I, want, I want him to call me. You want him to call you? Mm -hmm. He's calling you right now. I know. He's telling you he loves you. You that have some change? That you're welcome back whenever you want, okay? Let me we felt really intimidated and, and like after like 20 minutes of sitting there we realized there was literally nothing we could do so uh, she decided to walk back across the five lane high, uh, little highway and there was another bus stop over there with like 15 guys and they were all over her and you could tell each and every one of them were super high on drugs. They were all drinking alcohol. And the crazy thing is, we're right beside a liquor, liquor store, which was right beside a Salvation Army. How bizarre, right? So the part that really bothered me the most and that stuck out to me the most was when we pulled up, she was making out with this like really old guy like hardcore like oh it was so disgusting and he was like all over her and he kept pulling her back and forth and so like i said after about 20 minutes of it we realized that there was nothing we could really do for her other than pray for her and, and tell her that jesus loves her and so we collectively decided to you know pack up and you know head on down the road so our friends Richie and Chandra were in another car right beside us. So they took off first and uh, Adam and I kind of made one more loop around. And as we're driving down the road, they're probably maybe two or 300 feet down from the bus stop. And this girl, it was so sad. So there was like a metal fence, a metal barred fence, and she was hanging on to it while he was trying to pull her toward him. And this was in the middle of town, in the middle of a busy intersection, but it's in an area where nobody's ever gonna do anything. And I remember seeing that and I was like, wow, this is like, this is that girl's life. This is, this is what she probably does on an everyday basis. I don't know, man, it was just like, it was so sad. And for the next like 15 miles, we're just sitting in the car and I'm like, man, like I've never witnessed anything like that. Adam, Adam's, Adam's had, you know, been addicted to really hard drugs. He's been homeless. I don't know if he, it, it just didn't hit him. It was just like one of those things where like, I don't know. it it affected me so much. I don't know how Adam was really feeling, but you could tell he was sad because he's been in a similar situation like that before. He's been addicted to meth, heroin, all these drugs. He's been homeless before. He knows what it's like to get clean and become a normal human being again. And so we're driving down the road and Richie calls us and he's like, hey, we need to reconnect and uh, and such so uh, we got the phone we're driving a little bit further and adam looks down he was like hey whoa, whoa we're out of gas like the 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 um, 
mileage thing was just blinking, letting us know we're out of gas. And so we pulled into this gas station to get gas and um, Richie calls us again. I'm like, hey, we're actually across the street. Do you want to come meet us over here after you get gas? And we're like, sure. And it was another gas station. So as we're pulling up, I see this uh, kid run over to Richie and he's got this box of candies. And I had no idea what they were doing. And after the kid walked away, Richie ca called us and he was like, dude, you're never gonna believe this. This kid is trying to sell candy bars. I just assumed it was for like Boy Scouts or something to raise money. But no, he was trying to sell candy bars so him and his mom could get a hotel room for the night. And, and it turns out that Shanda, after we left that situation, she was praying to God and she was asking him to put a woman in our path that day to help. And I guess like after a little bit of the conversation with Richie and the little boy, turns out his name was PJ. And so PJ and his mom were living out of a U-Haul doing Postmates together. And in their downtime, he would walk around different parking lots and sell candy bars to the locals or vacationers. So we just thought this was the craziest story and we ended up, you know, reaching out to, we basically just walked over to the U-Haul and uh, this is all on camera. This is a video that's already uh, uploaded. You can check it out on Recovered on Purpose, uh, Adam Vibe Gutton's channel. Uh, it's an amazing video. They get to tell their story and such. So the next day, uh, so we ended up taking them to a hotel for like seven days and, and doing all this stuff for them. But the next day we went to pick them up, uh, PJ and his mom, Armani. And we're planning on taking them grocery shopping. Uh, we bought PJ a bunch of clothes and then we paid for their U-Haul for seven days. So, we were doing all this stuff and I just can't believe that we met these amazing people and that Shanda was praying for that literal situation. So the next day we pick them up, we do all this stuff for them and we're driving them back to this hotel. And like I said, keep in mind, when we left that bus stop yesterday, we're like 15 miles away at a random hotel Okay, Homeweed Suites. I'll never forget this day in my life, never. So we're kind of in the back of the hotel, like in the very back end, and we pull up to their room, and lo and behold, that guy that was all over the sweet girl that was on drugs the, the day prior was sitting right there on a crate. We just, we just got back. Uh, from getting all the groceries and all the clothes and everything and you just can't make this stuff up It was almost like he was positioned there for a purpose And I look at Adam and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe this. This is This is crazy the fact that we're 50 at least 15 miles away from that bus stop and how we were so emotional yesterday when we witnessed that and how we met these two awesome people just shortly after. Now we're sitting at a hotel room that we purchased for these two people and we get back and the guy's sitting on a crate right there. I just didn't know what to think. So I'm talking to Adam and uh, we're upstairs and we're like, I think we should we should go down there and like pray for him. And I was raised a, a Christian, like I was raised in like Pentecostal churches. And but I I feel like I just haven't really been living uh, the right life. So I myself I don't even know how to pray. And when I do pray, it's it tends to be for myself. So praying for others is like just completely a whole nother world for me. I've just, I've never put my hand on someone and prayed for them. So we go back downstairs, I turn the camera on, I'm like, no one's gonna believe this. No one is ever gonna believe this. 
and I set my, um, Adam starts introducing himself and he asked if we could pray for him. And the thing that blew my mind the most is this guy was a totally different person. He was not the same person at all. And so Adam puts his hand on the guy and um, probably about five or 10 seconds later, I'm like, let's do it. I put my hand on the guy and we're praying for him. I'm praying in my head and Adam's praying out loud, like loud. And Adam is like speaking to this guy like he's speaking to a demon that's inside of him. And we, we must have prayed for the guy for like a minute or two. And I had this rush of like chills fill my body the entire time. Like normally when you get like chills, it lasts for like what, two or three seconds. This was like two minutes. And I could feel like God was there. And God was, God was telling us the day prior when we pulled up, I was so scared to get out of the car and like go pray for this girl and ask her if she needed anything. We waited for her to come to us like, but it was like God was telling us, I know you didn't do what I was asking you to do, but thank you for praying for the girl anyway. Thank you for asking her if she needed anything. And the next day, it, it, it was like God was in this guy now, not the devil anymore. God was in the guy and he was normal. And it was like God, like I said, God was basically trying to show us what we did right and to show that that guy is not actually an evil guy. He was just misled by drugs and alcohol. And I, I don't know, it's just the fact that Adam's message is all about drug addiction, recovery, and the fact that we had that encounter with all these people, all these good people, it, it made me realize like how much drugs and alcohol can really affect your life. And it made me realize what the devil can do when you're on stuff like that. Even good people. That guy was a good guy. He wasn't a bad guy. He was just misled by drugs and alcohol. And I don't know. I just felt like God was there with us. I hope you guys one day have a day like this because it was just like reaffirming that God is so real and that it's not all made up and that, you know, some things don't make sense, but He's real, I'm telling you. He's so real. So, I forgot to mention something. Before we were about to go over there to meet Armani and PJ, uh, I'm, I'm about to get ready to go to a Starbucks to work on my laptop for a little bit. I ordered an Uber and right at the same time I click come get me I got a notification from uh, Uber that says Jesus is on his way and I got these chills like wow today's gonna be a great day I screenshotted it and I put it on Facebook and I said coincidence I don't think so and all of these people were like laughing at the post, thinking it was like, oh, I'm just being silly. And then we had that day, literally a couple hours later. It's truly amazing. Anyways, guys, I hope this story really inspired you to be a better person and to believe in God. Start praying, start asking for actual signs. Maybe you'll have an experience like this one day. I really hope so, because it changed my life forever. My name is Logan Mayberry, and thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel. We'll see you guys next time. Keep being more and doing more. Peace. nothing new but it's so good to see you we do this every day and 
And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight